All right, so today we're gonna to be creating a first person movement system. So as you can see here, we can look around, we can walk left and right, front and back, and we can also jump. Uh, so these are basic things you can build on to make a game, but this is gonna allow you to test out your levels, add on to it, maybe have a gun if you want, and all that kind of stuff, but this is really what you're gonna need. And we're also gonna be doing it with Logic Brick, so let's get into it. All right, so we are here in a fresh scene of Blender. So let's go ahead and come over here to default and change this to game logic. Now that we are in the game logic view, we also want to go ahead and change this from solid view to textured. Um, so what you see here, this is okay, but we kind of want it to be GLSL, just a bit of shading, of course. So just in, open that panel up, scroll down to G shading, open this up, and GLSL. Alright, so there we go. As you can see, we have some nice lighting. So this is going to be our player. So let's go ahead and call this player. Alright. And I'm going to make this about the size, double the size of this cube. So I'm going to go S, Z, 2. And that's going to make it about double the size, which is about the size of what a player should be. So let's go Control A. And then you'll come down here to apply scale. So now that we've done that, we're also going to go ahead and move this up. And as you can see now, it's sitting on top of the grid. So let's go ahead and grab the camera, Alt-G, Alt-R. And I'm going to go into the side view. And we're going to go ahead and click R, hold control, and it's going to rotate in increments. And then we're going to rotate it to about 90 degrees um, on the X. So as you can see now, it's facing forward. So let's go ahead and, or you could say it's facing in the Y direction. So we're going to go ahead and move this up to about here. And what you can go ahead and do is you can go ahead and change this to 30 if you like. So it's not so zoomed in. So now, uh, I mean, you might want to change it to 20 or something, depending on what you want. But I find the camera's a bit zoomed in, usually. All right, so now that we have done that, let's grab this camera and go go ahead and hold shift, click on this cube, and we're going to go control P parent object. So what this allows us to do is when we rotate this, as you can see, it's moving, and when we rotate this, it's 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 um, just moving by itself. But if we ro we to rotate these both together, uh, it means that the camera is going to copy the rotation of this cube but we also can do other rotations on this which we can have the nice first person looking around movement which we'll get into in just a second so let's go ahead and add a plane just for this to fall on and i'm going to scale this up and to about there and then i'm going to grab our player again and i'm going to come down to physics and we also want to make sure we are in blender game up here and we're going to come down to collision bounds changes from box of course you can leave it on box if you like and we can change it to cylinder, um, as you can see. So now we have these rounded edges. Now, of course, there's also this um, this one here, the cylinder. Oh, sorry, cylinder. This is capsule. Um, cylinder can be a great one if you want it. Um, it's going to not go rolling down the hill so much, and you're going to be able to stand on more rounded surfaces without slipping off. But if you want it, uh, a nice one, uh, I'd this one is really good because you can see how the physics mesh goes it's kind of it's it's a nicer thing uh but either of these will work great um but i prefer this one all right so now we have this all set up let's set up the first person looking so let's select our our player uh, mesh and we're going to go ahead and add a ah uh, uh one thing yes we're going to select our play mesh and change this to character so this is a character physics type, so we can have jumping and it will automatically walk up steps and stuff, which is really useful. So let's come here to player, and then we're going to go add, and we're going to add mouse, and we're going to change this to mouse movement. Um, so the reason we're changing this to mouse movement is the way we're going to do mouse look is not through a script, although you can if you like, if you want a lot more um, customizability. But if you are just looking for a nice, simple way to do it, you just come down here to Add Actuator and then Mouse. And you can change this from vis vis Visibility to Mouse Look. So once we've done that, if we click this up, what you see is if we press P, or you can come up here to Start Game, um, 
you can see it's moving around and it's kind of following where the mouse is. Uh, well, as you can see, it's got some strange things going on with the physics, but it is working. But we don't want our whole mesh going like that. So the way we can fix this is you want to go ahead and disable the uh, Y, I believe. Um, because this is going to be rotating on the X here. So this is orientation it's on. And these are just what it's called. I'm not sure why it's called that, but that's how it works. So this is orientation it's going to be rotating on. And these are just two different ones you can select. Um, so now, if we come into our game and press play, as you can see, we look around sideways. If we go into first person, as you can see though, uh, it, we can't look down. So how do we fix this? It's pretty simple. We do the same thing with our camera. We select our camera, and we go to mouse, mouse movement. Then we come over here to a mouse here. And then we're going to change this to mount mode to look. We're going to connect this up. And we are going to unclick this. Now, one nice thing about this is it automatically comes with the parameters here, which you can change. Um, but the camera's not going to be able to look lower than 90 degrees or higher than 90 degrees. So it's not going to flip backwards like this. Now, you can do it for the other one. So you could have them only be able to rotate a certain amount on this camera if you really wanted to by changing these parameters or these parameters here so you could change the max and min amount it can rotate but should be fine so what you should see now is we can look around and you may um, want to change this to something like 20 I'm not really a fan of that zoomed in look uh, usually it, it results in a really strange playing experience and a lot of the times it can be reason your game's not so good so definitely play around with focal length once you change your focal length you just won't be able to go back it's it's definitely a bit too zoomed in for what you're going to want in games usually all right so let's go ahead and select the mouse uh sorry the player movement so the way we do this is very simple just a little bit repetitive we're going to come down here and add a sensor and this is going to be a keyboard and we're going to go ahead and name this w and because we're going to be using W, A, S, and D keys, uh, because most games, first person games, use those. I mean, you can use the arrow keys, but I wouldn't advise it. Um, so we can click W, and there we go. So as you can see, if, um, it's all set up. Uh, and then we could go ahead and add a, another keyboard sensor. Now, what you could do here, um, I'm going to use this as the S for backwards, but what you could do is you could double the keyboard sensors and go. Um, arrow key up here right and then you could add a controller or and then connect these up and what this would allow people to do is to use arrow keys or or the W, A, S and D of course you'd have to do this for every single um, movement so the left so D and the right uh, left key sorry D and the left key and then A and the right key and then S and the down key you'd have to create 8 of these for the 4 keys so um we're just going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to go ahead and not worry about that. Uh, you can go ahead and do that if you like, but it should be fine. So I'm going to add a keyboard, S, S, and I'm going to call it S, just so we can easily see what we're trying to do. And this one's going to be A, A, and then this one can be D, D. All right, so now we've done that. We're going to go ahead and add a motion, a motion, oops. A motion, a motion, and a motion. Uh, all right, so we've already got this connected up to all, so you can just go ahead and connect this in, and we can say which direction or which do we want to go into. So this is W, so we want it to go forward. So let's go ahead and put in here point one. Um, on the Y because you can see the Y is pointing forward and we also want to make sure this is ticked because this is not ticked uh, Even if it's rotated, it's going to still go in this direction. So we want to make sure it's local which it is by default. So just leave that And now you see it's when we hit W We, we move forward All right, and we can look around 
So we want to go ahead and set this up for all the rest. So this is going to be minus 0.1. As you can see, I'm going to go ahead and connect this up. And then we're going to go ahead and connect this A up. And this is going to be minus, uh, wait, no, it's going to be, so this is A, it's going to be, uh, yes, it is going to be minus 0.1 on the X. And the reason we're doing on the X, as you can see here, it shows the directions. Uh, if you have done this in a different direction, the direction directions might show up differently. So where your camera's pointing is going to make a big difference. But as you can see down here, it says X is up. Uh, the Y, the Z is up and the X is across. So if we go minus uh, 0.1, it's going to go in this direction at a constant speed of 0.1 or 0.10, however you want to say it. So now, as you can see, we can move sideways, forward, sideways, backwards. And what we've got to go ahead and do now is just come over here, change this X to 0.1, because it's going to be going in this direction. All right, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and connect this up. And it should be good. So as you can see, we can move left, right, forward, backwards, and it's all good. So let's go ahead and add jumping. Now, thanks to the great physics type of the character, jumping is very easy to implement. All we've got to do is add a keyboard, and I'm going to have space bar as our jump, and I'm going to call this jump, jump, and then we're going to go ahead and add a motion. I'm going to change this from simple motion to character motion, connect this up and just right here just click jump and now what you'll see is we can jump and we can also move around now one thing to note is what you can go ahead and do is you can change all of these character motion and put these numbers in again and what this is going to do is it's not going to allow you to move around when you're in the air. Now, I don't know if you want that or not, but that is a thing you can have. So if you want to have it so you can't move around when you're in the air, you can do that. But there we go. That is how you do a basic first person movement system. Uh, it works really great for a lot of any games you're doing. And I'm sure someone can find uses for it uh, in a few not really into programming. This is the way you can make a first person look around walking thing uh, movement. So there we go. If you want to see more tutorials like this and tutorials on other subjects, I do come out with new tutorials every single week. So you can go ahead and subscribe to see them. Um, but other than that, have a great week. Keep blending and make something cool. I really hope this tutorial gets